came from. Yahweh formed the beast of the field from what? From the, look at verse 19, from the ground. Where was every beast of the field formed? From the ground. Where was Adam and Chava formed from? From the ground. So that Adam and Chava and the animals were brothers in the kingdom of Yahweh. Oh, Baruch Hashem, Yahweh. Brothers, in the sense that they both had the same origin. Not in terms of intellect. Not in terms of a living soul. But in terms of their origin and their destiny. Don't miss this now. In terms of their origin and their destiny. Some of y'all go, you're behind somewhere in China. Looking at me like I just sprung out of a mushroom. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. See, I, I, I want to, I want to put, I want to push this home. Shotness, a taste, a glimpse of the future. Man and animal, Adam the Chava, the Kol Habehemot, had the same origin, the dust of the of the ground. From yeah. dust thou art, to dust thou shalt return. Does my dead dog go to heaven? No, Tatala. He goes back to the dust from where he came. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so there's good news and bad news. The bad news is you can't take your pet with you into the kingdom. <laughs> the good news is he's going to give you another pet. <laughs> And that pet is going to act just like you. <laughs> just like you. Let's continue. Uh, yeah. Yahweh says, listen, do not, do not mi mix animals with plants, listen, because we are to respect the millennial position by obeying Shatnit in this age. Are you with me? We are to respect the future status of animals. Amen? Yeah. He's not saying, he's saying, don't wear wool and linen together because, because the wool or the sheep or the animal will inherit the kingdom just like you will. Are you getting this? Mm -hmm. yeah. Just like you will. And so don't, mi don't, don't mix wool and linen. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Because we are to respect, listen, we are to respect their position in the age to come. Are you with me? Yes. Though their position is they will be like men. And I'll prove that to you. How were they in the Garden of Eden? They all came to Adam and Chava. What did Adam and Chava do? He gave them names. How did the lion and the bear and the tiger and all these beasts of ferocity and ferocity, for ferocious beasts, how did they come to Adam and Chava without killing them and eating them and consuming them? How did that happen? Because they were all what? Tame. They were all under the Ruach. They were all under the subjecting Ruach HaKodesh of Yahweh Elohim. Are you with me? And so they didn't consume the man. The man didn't consume the animal. And they cohabitated equally in the sense that they were, they share the garden. Yeah. They share the garden. Yeah. Turn to your neighbor and say, they share the garden. They share the garden. Should I stop now? No. I'm not even near where I'm going. <laughs> they share the garden. So here's a hook that Yahweh says, don't mix wool and linen. Why? Because now everything's mixed up. But then everything won't be mixed up. Right. Now everything's screwed up. If in case you hadn't noticed, everything's screwed up. Up is down, black is white, right. left is right, north is south, east is west. Yeah. Good is evil, evil is good. Yeah. Right. So if it was only a, a, a mishpat, Yahweh would say, go ahead and mix your clothing, mix your garments, who cares? Because it's a sign that everything's mixed up in this age. But the laws of Shatnitz are a prophetic, listen, a prophetic foretelling that in then, when, then, 
the mix-up is over. In the natural, the Christian looks at it and goes, oh, oh, God, thank God for grace. The Hebrew looks at it and goes, what you mean, Yahweh? Because in this age, this makes no sense. In here and now, this don't make no sense. What are you saying to me, Yahweh? And Yahweh says, come. Let me teach you a little remnant. Come, 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 come. Let me teach you a little son. Are you with me? Because Adam, Chava, the call of the Hemot, Hem, Ba'u, Me, Oto, Hamakum, from the same place. They all came from the dust. They didn't kill Adam and Eve. The tiger came. Now the tiger comes to Adam and goes, <laughs> You see the teeth. Even, 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 even my little chihuahua shows me teeth. <laughs> I don't pet it on the tocus lay and I pet it on the, on the head instead of petting it on the tocus. But the ad, the bear, the tiger, the panther, <laughs> maybe a dinosaur if we stretch our imagination. And Adam said, I think I'll call this Caleb. I think I'll call He named it. They left him alone. Okay. He left them alone because they were from the same source. They had the same origin. And they had the same destination. So the Christian looks at this, and I'm not dumping on Christians. I'm dumping on the system. Because they're they're hostage to the system. You want a prison ministry? You like how many how many how many like visiting prisoners? Go to the churches and to the Jewish synagogues that are in bondage and tell them the truth of who they are and what Yahweh expects of them. There's your prison ministry. Come on. I know that's right. That's the greatest prison ministry because it's in numbers in the hundreds of millions. Hmm. So in this age it makes no sense. Okay, fine, Father. I'm not going to mix wool and linen. Because in order to have wool, I've got to kill and shed blood. And there is an ethical question there, is there not? There's an ethical question there, is there not? And so in order to get my wool sweater and then mix it with a thread of linen, there's no, there's no ethical question deriving the linen flax from a plant. There's no ethical question. But there is an ethical question deriving the the wool from a sheep. But where does the ethical question come up? In a mixed up age. Are you with me? We live in a mixed up age. Where killing Jews and Christians, if you're a Muslim, killing Jews and Christians is the quickest way to go be with Allah. <laughs> How do you get to Allah quicker? Just find more innocent victims to kill. That's a mixed up age. And so in this mixed up age, there are moral ethics and ethical questions that, that seem, that it seems like we have to be cruel and mean to, to the animal, but in the beginning, it was not so. And in the end, it shall not be so. Amen. Is anyone with me? Yes. Anyone other than my front row here? My second row's there. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. They've checked in. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So we see here in Bereshus 2.19, from the ground... Elohim formed every beast. Look at verse 19, Horatius 2, 19. Every beast from the field, every bird from the heaven in the heavens for man to see what he would call them and whatever man called the living creature, that was its name. Are you with me? What's this called? The Garden of Eden. Gan Eden. What's this called? Peace. Between animals. And man, only after the Garden of Eden does the question arise, can man kill a sheep or an animal to clothe himself? Even the question is, is a reference to the fall that took place in the garden. But in the kingdom to come, it won't be so. so. So from the Hebraic mindset, we don't look at this and go, oh, Yahweh, you don't want me to dress properly. I can't be modern. I can't be hip. I can't be in. I can't be cool. No. Yahweh is teaching you to get ready for the kingdom of Yahweh when Yeshua rules and reigns from Yerushalayim. 
because then the animal will be to you and you will be to it as you were to it and he was to you back in the days of our days. And that's why it is the only way to understand scripture is from a Hebraic understanding because what seems to be outdated laws and regulations is in truth your life and righteousness and health to you. I in 15 years as a messianic rabbi, I have never done a funeral because we live according to Torah. We get sick, but we get healed. You know why they have prayer lines every Sunday? Because the same folks never get healed. Instead of just stop looking for the amazing miracles and start living the simple guidelines of Torah. Amen. Amen. That's right. I'm going to do another wedding pretty soon. That's me. <laughs> now, I've had people in my congregation who have experienced deaths in their families. I've never done a funeral. I'm a member of my synagogue. I've done funerals for people that have asked me to do funerals, but never, never one of my sheep. Why? Because if you live Torah, it's health to you. It's life to you. It's righteousness to you. Are you with me? Yes. And so even what seems to be in the natural, a nonsense ordinance that makes no sense, that has no value, that has no meaning, in this age, we drop down to the second level of interpretation, which is remez, and we go, Yahweh, what do you want to teach me about the world to come? If this has no application, as a mishpat does in the here and now, what application do you want to teach me about the world to come? See the beauty of being Hebraic and understanding things from a Hebraic mindset? Mm -hmm. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Where do we see this again? So Yahweh says, when I tell you not to wear wool and linen, I'm teaching you, listen, listen, and stop, stop wandering, listen! I'm teaching you the position of the animal in the kingdom age to come. That everything will be made right. Everything will be restored. Everything will be restructured. In the here and now, when you don't, when you don't mix wool and linen, what's the best way not to mix wool and linen? Don't wear wool. That's hard to understand. What's the best way not to mix wool and linen? Don't wear wool. What's the best way not to wear wool? You don't kill the animal. Does that prepare you for the world to come? Huh? Oh, yes, it does. And to pray, Baruch Hashem Yahweh, these are chukim that make no sense unless we see them through the eyes of eternity. And that's how we know the Torah is eternal. Everything in the Torah, if it doesn't have an immediate application, has an eschatological application, has a prophetic application, has an end time application. So when your pastor tells you, don't do that, it, that fat rabbi keeps telling you to do this stuff. I'm telling you not to violate shotness. Not because Yahweh doesn't want you to have a nice sweater mixed in with plants and wool. Because he wants you prepared. Why are you coming to the Moadim this year? To prepare, to rehearse. So when the trumpet sounds, you'll be ready. Isn't that why we're coming? We're not coming for redemption. We already have redemption. We already have salvation. We already have the blood atonement. Yeshua has provided all. He is all, all and in all when it comes to the kapara of redemption. But we're coming to be rehearsed, to be prepared, lest we be like the five foolish virgins that had the lamp, but they had no oil in the lamp. That's like our brothers and sisters who think this is Jewish legalism. They've got the lamp, but they refuse to put the oil in the lamp. Amen. The lamp sits on a shelf, yeah. Yeah. along with their King Jimmy. That's right. That's right. <laughs> my, my, my. Go with me, please, to Yeshayahu 11. Yeshiahu 11. Is anyone enjoying? Yes. yes. I said, is anyone enjoying? I'll get it Yes. Yes. So because, because the church looks at this and they think, we're in the age, what does the church teach? We are in the age of grace. grace. Or another way to say it, we are in the age of the church. So if you're in the age of the church, you don't need the Torah, right? Right, now you get it. So in other words, because it doesn't have an immediate application to this age, it must have no significance, and Yahweh must be a little bit, bit, a little bit hard of hearing nowadays. What's he doing giving us chukim that have no apparent here and now immediate meaning? So they dismiss it rather than jump down to the remez and say, okay, if it's not in the pashat level, then what is Yahweh hinting at here? What is he really trying to say? If it, if it's nothing to do with now, then it must have something to do with then. Now, 
Then, can, can, can we talk? Yes. Can we talk? Yes. Here's this real life understanding. You can understand the Bible in two seconds. Instant scholarship. Ready? All scripture can be understood this way. Here, now, and then. Now, and then. Greco-Roman mindset says, no, 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 it's not that simple. There is the age of innocence. Then the age of the flood. Then once the age of the flood came, came the age of the patriarchs. Then when that vanished, came the age of Israel. Then when they rejected gold, gold rejected them. Then came the age of the church. Then when the church is, woo, 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 be me up, Scotty, woo, 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 woo. woo, woo, woo. Because, you know, we, we know, we know, we know the Father loves the Jews, but he can't love the Jews and the church at the same time because then he'd be a whoremonger. So how, we got to get rid of the church. So how do we do it? In the rapture. Then he can love the Jews again, see? Do, 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 do. And what happens? But not all Jews, only 144,000. You see the church dispensational mentality? Only 144,000, the rest of them he don't love. And then the church comes back with Christ, sets up the kingdom on earth, and the new age. So there are all these ages... And they whip out these huge charts, you know, on TV. They need an extra wide lens camera so you can see the whole chart. And they got these PowerPoint presentations, you know, and they point. This age ends here. And this age begins here. Who are they to tell Yahweh when one age begins another? These are the same guys that can't even tie their shoes at the same time. These are the guys that get arthritis and can't even bend down and put on their belt. And they're going to tell Yahweh when one age begins and the other ends? It's true. It's a truth. But it's so easy in the Hebraic understanding. Now and then. How do you get into the then? You get saved. When you get saved, you go to you live in the then. But when do you get saved? Now. When do you experience the feast? Now. When do you experience the Moedim? Now. Why? Because then is coming. And when you do all the things now, you get to be in the then. So easy. Amen. No dispensationalism. Here and now and then. So Yahweh says, here's a hook, Mr. Samter, do not violate the laws of Shotniks. Why? My wife got me a beautiful sweater. It's it's wool and, and linen. Fine linen. Not just any linen, fine linen. <laughs> Yahweh ah. says, no. I want to teach you how the animals used to be relating to you as, as sons of Adam in the garden. You were both made from the dust of the earth. And I want to teach you how these ad animals are going to relate to you in the kingdom to come, which is what you're being prepared for, which is why you're keeping Shabbat, which is why you're keeping the Moadim, which is why you're keeping the feast, to be a peculiar nation of prepared, ready to inherit the kingdom. People, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you the foundation of the world. Come ye blessed of my father. Yahweh says to you, and inherit the kingdom. Prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Don't you want to see the kingdom in the Torah? Did you ever see the Torah as a pro Fix it. Fix it. Operate. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> the Torah is a preparation manual for the kingdom to come. Of course, if you look at it as legalism, you don't need it. Of course. But if you have a wrong premise, you're going to have a wrong conclusion. I'll say that again. If you have a wrong premise, you're going to have a wrong conclusion. The premise is it's legalism. Your conclusion will be wrong. If the premise is it's the instructions how to behave in the kingdom. In other words, don't wear wool and linen because there will be no death or dying in all my holy mountain, saith Yahweh of hosts. That's why you don't wear wool and linen. Because there will be none to make afraid, none to kill and destroy in all my holy mountain, saith Yahweh. The kingdom will be established from Sion, on hard Sion, Mount Sion. The same place of the birth of the assembly on Har Sion, Mount Sion, Mount Sion. And in that day, you won't be able to kill animals. You won't be able to kill your neighbor. You won't be able to steal from your neighbor. I'm preparing and getting you ready to inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, somebody. Yahweh. 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 Yahwe
or in the Greco-Roman mindset says, hey, brother, aren't you glad this stuff's been nailed to the cross? We don't have to do that anymore. So then, right. if they're not preparing, okay. and they see the preparation manual as a legalistic bondage manual, they are in danger of not being ready. Matter of fact, they are in danger of being the five virgins, just like the, for, oh, all Wait, ten virgins said, are virgins. Wait, but five are stupid. Yes. Right. Because five believe they're shepherds. And Ezekiel 34 says, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who oh, yeah. feed not the flock, oh, but yeah. feed themselves. He says, In that day I will come and gather my sheep. Even I myself will gather my sheep. I'm coming in the person of Yeshua to gather my own sheep because you did not feed the flock. You fed yourselves with aggrandizement and riches and merchandising and telling the flock of Yahweh that the Torah was an antiquated document. Go with me, please. To Yeshayahu 11. Does anyone enjoy? Yes. Amen. Yeshayahu 11. Bring the coffee in. Four. No more. Yeshayahu 11. Drink the water. And four. <laughs> and let's be honest. If, if we're only going to live in this age, then the law of Shotnitz makes no, makes no sense. True? If we're not going to inherit the kingdom to come, or the Atid Lavo. What, what good is the law of Shatman? It's a waste of time, isn't it? Right, yes. Waste of time. What, what, what is the purpose of the law of Shatman? It is a glimpse into the future, is it not? It has no immediate application that makes sense other than to train your sensibilities against the ethical morality in actually killing animals when our first parents didn't kill them, they spoke to them. <laughs> Yeshayahu 11, 4 through 9. Here is what the Torah of Shatnet is all about. But with the righteous, Yeshua shall judge the poor. He will decide with straightness for the meek ones of the earth. He will smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. He will slay the wrong in the breath of his lips. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins. Trustworthiness the girdle of his ways. The wolf shall dwell with the Lamb. Hallelujah! Yeah. Yeah. Meaning the wolf will not shear, eat, or destroy the Lamb. Amen. This is what kingdom life is all about. This is what millennial life is all about. Amen. This is what the age to come is all about. Yeah. And you need the Torah of Shotnitz to prepare you to get a glimpse of the future so you can behave in the future and you can respect the future. The problem is, in the Greco-Roman system, they don't respect the future. They talk about a coming kingdom of which they're going to inherit, but they think that Yeshua is going to rule by grace. No, he won't. It says he will rule the nations with a rod of iron, the Kukim and Mishpatim of Torah. And all the things that don't make sense now will make sense when in that day, they will make sense. Hallelujah. Blessed are the people who understand these things now, for they are the ones prepared to inherit the kingdom. Look at verse 6. A wolf will dwell with a lamb. A, vi a vicious leopard will lie down with a young goat. Yes, now, if the leopards are going to leave the goats alone, and, and, the, and the wolves and the lions are going to leave the lambs alone, what are you and I who are higher than them? They're going to be like us. They're going to be moral agents, free, moral, independent agents who respect life. Yes. But if, that, if they're going to inherit our position, watch what we're going to inherit. I'll get to that in a few hours. Stay with me. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> for landing. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the millennial and the atid lavo. The calf and the young lion will be best friends. What about now? Do a calf and a lion get along? No. No, no way. Eden will be restored. The fat link together. A little child leads them. Look at me. You are that little child. Huh. The children of Yahweh. <laughs> How are you going to lead them if you're violating the Torah now? If we rule and reign with Yeshua, that means we've got to be teaching Yeshua's constitution. The United States has a constitution. To rule and reign with Yeshua, we've got to be teaching the nations his constitution. And so the lion lies down with the lamb, and the lion and the tiger leave the fatted calf, but... They're not going to be on their own accord. You and I, the little children, will lead them 
How? Because we, we know the Torah. We practice shot nights now. So you don't want to wear a garment of wool and linen. You don't want to do that. Why? Because you are not participating. How are you going to lead in the kingdom when you're not following now? The Torah is for today, man. It's for today, man. Stop letting them lie to you. They're liars. There's no truth in them. <coughs> How are you going to lead when you're not willing to follow today? Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So we should, instead of saying Yahweh, what is this? What do you mean? Yahweh, thank you, you're prepared.